Jazzcast Pros. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Getting Real with Bossy. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Kelly. I know. Hi. It feels like I haven't seen you in weeks. <laughs> it's so funny because we have just spent a lot of time together. Today we are going to be interviewing Sajal Shah Gulati, who is a really fascinating woman who has had done so much in her lifetime and is going to really focus most of our time together talking about funding because oh it's my always gosh. about funding. So we just came back from a very exciting trip to DC, which we were super fortunate to be able to go on and talking to legislators and advocating for the needs of small businesses. And it doesn't matter what the legislators advocating for or against, it always comes down to money and the access to money. Uh huh. And I think, you know, we're down there as really, I mean, in, in with the group that we were with, with people from over 42 countries all owning these huge restaurant groups. I think we were on the lower scale of, of what we do, but it doesn't matter. That's what every conversation comes back to is it's no matter if you have a a restaurant that nets a th- or that's making a thousand dollars a week or a million dollars a year, or I don't know that one guy had like $30 million a year. It all comes down to still there's those times where you need to be able to access money. Yes. And it was uh, states, not countries. Oh, right. Did I say countries? You did say countries. But you know what? It was a whirlwind trip and we jumped right back (laughs) into work. It was a whirlwind trip. It was jam packed and we came back and life did not stop. And I feel like I, you know, was back into a 12 hour workday yesterday. Yeah, it was insane. But yeah, it's all about money. So I love the alternative funding that now provides. And I hope that everybody listening, even if they don't use now for their services, really thinks about the options that are out there. Because I think that a lot of especially very small business owners or people that are new to it don't understand how alternative you may need to get. And that there's options out there. And knowing that these things exist will make you be a little bit more creative about what you're looking for and asking for the next time you find yourself in a situation where you need funding and you need it now. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Kelly. And I'm Kelly. The host of Getting Real with Bossy, the real, raw, and honest podcast about small business ownership. With our experience, nine businesses in over 25 years, we continue to bear it all and share what we wish we had known. We move past the must-be-nices and start getting real. And we are joined from New York, live from New York City, right? (laughs) We have Sajal Shah Gulati. She is the Chief Growth Officer of NOW. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, and just tell us a little bit about you and your life because it's fascinating. And then really we want to dive right into now and and what that's all about. Awesome. Well, thank you, um, Kelly and Kelly, for having me on. I'm really, really very excited. I am the Chief Growth Growth Officer for now, and we'll talk about that, but I'm in charge of all things growth for the company. Prior to that, um, I had a, a little bit of a peripatetic career, both in fintech and financial services, as well as media. So I spent 11 years of my, actually 16 years of my life um, at Time or various Time properties when Time um, was a larger media company. Uh, With my last in a time being, I had run, uh, I had started and run a company out of Bangalore, India that Time eventually bought, which I loved. And then I have done, I've been at American Express and um, a couple of startups. So I've had a long and varied career. You really just jammed that in, but it... Yes. <laughs> I can't find it. As I was talking, I was like, gosh, that sounds really confused, but I hope it came out. I mean, it was a little... Quite the elevator pitch. It really like, is. Here's the resume in one minute. Right. So I don't know that we'll get to all of those things, but definitely Google Seja because it's pretty amazing, all the things she's done. So, all right. Let's talk about now how you got involved with them and what what they do. So the way I got involved with now is I was introduced to Laura Hodgson, who's the uh, one of the co-founders, the president and the CEO, who's an amazing, amazing woman. And we were just actually introduced semi-socially. A friend of mine introduced us. I was working at another place at the time, and I became an informal advisor. And I I was advising the company for about a year 
on various growth strategies. So whether it was marketing or business development um, or sales, what the company does really, really spoke to me. And what they do is, and the premise of what they do is to help with wealth creation through business ownership. And the way you do that is by providing capital and cash flow. And it was something that is so important to me because I believe the way to independence and freedom is ownership. It's money, it's ownership and, and, and being able to create a legacy. And, and I saw this as a vehicle to do that. So when the opportunity came on board and Lara said, look, you know, you've been helping us informally, would you want to come on officially? I was like, yes. So I joined two years ago and that's, that's been the journey so far. And so the company you asked, what do we do? So what we do is we accelerate invoices. And you may say, what is that? And, and essentially, I also like to say we are a kinder, gentler, transparent factoring alternative, which is you have invoices, um, you're a B2B company, you have invoices and invoices to larger companies who, as Lara, our CEO says, sometimes the net terms are a suggestion. And they often pay, and we have found they have paid, you know, if they have 30-day terms, they often pay in 90 or 180 days, which is really hard if you're a small business, if you're a medium-sized business even, where you depend on the cash flow to pay your employees, to pay your suppliers, um, to pay your rent. And, um, and when you've delivered the service and you have to wait an extra 90 days or 120 days, that can sometimes be the difference between staying in business and going out of business. And so this is really just helping companies access cash that's owed to them at sort of fair and transparent pricing. And, and what I mean by that, and this is the other thing that I really, really love about the company, is traditional factoring companies and banks that give loans, oftentimes the interest rate is variable. And so, you know, if someone were not to pay or it takes too long, you know, the interest accumulates and, um, and gets higher. In our case, it's a one-time fee. It's a one-time fee. So you have, you know, if it's $100 and you have 15-day terms, we charge 3%. And so and I'm using those examples because it's easy math and I can do it in my head without making it. <laughs> and so uh, we will pay you $97. We will keep three. The $3, it does not impact your balance sheet. Is it an expense? That's it. You're done. The $97 are yours. I collect the $97, the full $100, excuse me, from your supplier. So you're done. And you can use us as a way to accelerate cash because you can say, hey, I know I have a supplier that always pays me late. So it's worthwhile for me to pay the 3% or the 3.5%. Our, our rates depend on the net terms, but they do not change. So even if your supplier pays late, that's okay. It is still the same, um, which is what I really loved about it because I saw us as an advocate for the small business, as an advocate for the medium-sized business. Because here's the deal. I used to work at American Express. I love American Express. I think it's a great, great company. It was great to me. However, American Express's net terms are long and they're hard. And uh, if you're a small business and you want to get paid, it's hard. And it's not just Amex. It's Coca-Cola. It's P&G. It's Cisco. You name the big company, they have 90-day net terms, sometimes 120-day net terms, sometimes 180-day net terms. And the truth is you probably need the money now. Or you would forget need. You want the money now, right? You want the money to invest. You want the, And it's worth the expense, right? You're doing the calculation that, you know what? $97 today is more important to me than $100 three months from now or $100 six weeks from now. So that's really uh, what the and company if you're providing does. like a business to business service or product, you've likely had to pay up front to get those things. Like I think of something like that people would understand like t-shirts. You know, I'm making t-shirts for a football team. Now I have to buy all the t-shirts. I have to buy all the ink. I have to buy the equipment. I have to personnel. I got to pay everybody to make them. I'm going to send them to the, the whatever company and then they're going to have 90 day terms or even if they have 30 day terms and they're late on it, I've already had to put that money up. Yeah. You're out of that money. Yeah. And you're just sitting and waiting. Like we work a lot with catering and we're, you know, cash flow. And that's why the nice thing about restaurants is yes. cash. Like you get paid. 
But when you work with the hospitals and you work with the school districts and you work with any of these, especially not for profits, we're like calling after three months, like, hey, I did this $4,000 catering order for you. Like, I still haven't gotten paid. (laughs) And I had to provide that service three months ago and pay for all of that stuff. And I imagine in your companies, you guys don't have an accounts no, receivable because department. Because we don't really use it. Me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so this is really, it, it's outsourcing your accounts receivable. It's saying, you know what? I've decided that I think this client, this client, and this client, I don't want to chase after them. It also allows you to be a better partner, right? Because you have someone else collecting the money. It sort of allows you, right, to be the good guy. Right. It allows you to sort of increase and sell more business because you have someone else who's collecting for you, essentially. That's amazing. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to hire you guys uh-huh. just to call the hospital. It's amazing. It really <laughs> right. okay, I need my money. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. We have we have a school that yeah. we're waiting on still. So and those are they're never small numbers, right? They're always these big catering. So No. And it's hard to live without that cash flow. Right? And they're not paying you interest, right? When they when they actually pay you, it's not like they're paying you interest on that money. So I just had the idea. I'm going to start adding a line on those caterings that we know are going to be late of like, here's the fee because I know I have to wait for your check. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we often, you know, one of the things when we, we um, talk to clients is we say, bake in our fee into your um, bill. That way it's net net positive for you, right? Like just bake it in so that you know, okay, I have to accelerate this invoice. It's it's going to be fine for me because I'm going to recoup that, right? Like it's going to be something right. where I can recoup. So how does it work? If I'm a business and I want to hire you, do I have to be in business? Do I have to have been in business for a certain amount of time? So what we do is, so we have a few criteria, B2B, right? So we're not, we're not going to collect from another, from a consumer. Right. So so we're B2B exclusively. We do not. The one um, category we don't work with is construction. And that tends to because there's just a lot of variability in terms of billing and and all of that. But we work with various segments. And so if you want to work with us, it's actually as easy as going to our site and you will go will be asked a bunch of questions that helps us determine whether it's the right fit. You're then submitted for something called an SBFE score. And the SBFE score is something which is equivalent of a credit score, a small business credit score. If you have a qualifying SBFE score, you then get called by one of our salespeople. And we go through a business review. Um, and then the company is does go through underwriting. And so what we do is we underwrite um, the company and, and the customer has to go through our credit approval. So we one of the advantages of our business and one of the things that we can do that a small business can't do on their own is we have trade credit insurance. And um, the trade credit insurance insures the receivables for us. And so what we do is let's say you your client is American Express. American Express would go through and be approved. American Express would be approved because it's in good financial standing. And so once the your the customer of the invoices you want to accelerate is approved and you've gone through our underwriting, then you can begin the process. And the process is in part of our process, and this is to ensure that um, that you're safe from fraud and that we're safe from fraud, is that we actually confirm the invoice. So we will call your customer, um, you know, Kelly, you mentioned a school, we'll call the school and say, you know, did Kelly provide these services? Yes, they did. Were they, you know, acceptable? And so it's just a matter of time of you paying. Yes, great. And so once that's approved, and then we will pay you. Within all that approval happens, we pay you within 20 to 48 wow. hours, 24 to 48 hours. Fancy. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really, really great. It's one of the most satisfying, and I always joke um, with our team, I have the best job. So being the chief growth officer is the best job because you're you're selling a service and product that you love. You get to help people and you get to see it on the front end, which is just really it's a it's a wonderful reward. And cash flow is so important. It's everything. I think people sometimes, you know, when you when you start a business, it's something that is not intuitive all the time. You I mean, who's not excited about getting 
a big deal from Whole Foods. Like who's not excited about getting a deal from Target? Like those are amazing, amazing companies. I think sometimes we don't think through, including me. You're like, wait a minute, it's going to cost me X to be able to provide these goods and I'm not going to get paid. What do I do in that in-between period? And it's so hard for small businesses to get traditional funding. Like it is really hard. And and it fe- and it's really um, unfair, you know. And it feels like a like it's sort of a weird cycle. But I think what we try to do is we really really try to help businesses not only get funding but fair funding, if oh, that yeah. makes sense. Like it's not you know you're not constrained by it. You know it's not something that will hold you back, but something that you can use as a tool. You know our clients that really leverage their now account, which is what we call it. It's a tool in their toolkit, right? Like it allow it allows you to take on that big client, right? Like it allows you to say yes to an American Express, to a PNG, to a target to say, hey, I have a backup mechanism because I and I don't have to worry about following up with them to pay. Oh, I can't imagine getting a hold of Target. Being like, I need my invoice paid. <laughs> right? So if somebody's using you for for a Target account, do they kind of get to keep you on retainer or is it every time a new invoice comes up, they kind of go through the same process? So so they, um, something in between, right? So, so if it's Target, if it's the same customer, so we've gone through the underwriting, we've gone through, they've approved, then you just submit the invoices, right, um, into the system and you get paid. So it's really quite seamless, right? And so, um, and we have a one-time annual fee. And so that really is, it's sort of a year's worth of services and you can put as many customers as you want. Oh, I know it's not something that I necessarily would need all the time, but I can think of so many people that this would be so helpful for. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is really, um, you know, we have found that this really works. You know, there are a lot of people, women in particular, who own marketing services companies and, you know, or graphic design or any of those, you know, a lot of those, especially with large clients, you're paying on net terms, right? And um, and you either have, you know, either you're doing it or you have contractors that are doing it, you have employees that are doing it, you have to pay their salaries. And so, and they t- also tend to be large amounts, like $20,000, $50,000, right? And so we have found that this is a service in particular that serves the needs of a lot of professional services companies, whether it's mm-hmm. IT services or marketing That's services. That's great. I'm going to call my brother-in-law as soon as we're done, because this is, I think, his biggest complaint. He is a small business, but he's doing large number jobs, and it sometimes six months he is waiting on money and he's oh, yeah. he's got oh, yeah. full-time employees that he's paying quite well so yeah yeah and and you know he wants to be a good employer and, and they're not going to wait right like employees can't wait right. to get paid and so um it really is um and, and you know what I, I don't believe net terms are going to go away I don't think they are because they're they're advantageous in, for a variety of reasons and so this is this is actually not a commentary on you know, net terms and saying, okay, you have net terms. Great. This is a solution to help you deal with that. So I have a pivot question. So I, when thinking about like all of the things that you've done and all of the things you've experienced, you've started your own business, you sold it to time, which is huge. So (laughs) as a small business owner, is there something between your owning a business and also um, working for these large places that you wish other small business owners knew? Oh, yeah. So one is you can get through the hard days. So so in retrospect, I think back, I loved owning my business. I have to tell you, there is nothing like it. It is really, really, you know, it's like that Invictus poem. You're the master of your fate, the captain of your soul, right? Like it really it doesn't feel like that always, but you are, right? And so what I would say to them, to small business owners, is there are going to be like tough days and tough days. And it's actually like, okay, right? It's okay. You'll get through it. You will get through it. And it's just, you got to wake up the next day, right? And 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 it really is, um, you know, it sounds cliche, but it is, it's just making it to the next day, making it. And that is what will get you through. Because I remember being like, oh my God, am I going to make it right? Like it's very, very stressful. 
That's one. I think the other thing I would say is, and this again, is really take care of yourself. Kelly and I were talking about this earlier. Like you are no good to your business, your family, your employees if you are if your tank is empty. You know, whatever you need to do. I have a meditation practice. I like to work out. Like I think you have to have to take care of yourself because and it may seem impossible. So it could it can be a 10 minute walk, like a five minute you know, calm meditation, anything, but there, you absolutely need to take care of yourself because then you have like the peace of mind and a little bit of clarity to be able to make right decisions, right? You're able to see it and see the forest for the trees and see the trees in the forest and all of that and be able to move forward. So um, my two pieces of advice is it always gets better and um, please take care of yourself. But it's funny too, because when I think about working out and all that, the reason I do it is because no one talks to me and I yeah. don't like you doing need it. it. No, like I generally important. have to drag myself to do it, but I'm like, I just need 45 minutes where no one's going to talk to me. Yeah. And a lot of times I find myself coming up with better solutions while I'm doing it. Like I'll be walking on the treadmill and all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, why don't I think of it this way? It's because I finally had a moment. Cause even at home, you know, like, Oh, I'm going to sit. Oh, I got to go. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, that's dirty. Oh, I need a vacuum. Yeah. Oh, I, last, <laughs> last night I was home. I was trying to work. Mom, 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 my arm hurts. Mom, where is this? Mom, like, like to the point where I like, I had to, I'm like, I'm going to bed because the only piece I'm going to get is if I actually go and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, you're sleeping. I can't talk to you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> For everyone around us, it's, it's good. You just got to take care of yourself. I mean, again, everyone says it, but I think it's essential. Just finding that thing that brings you peace. And honestly, knowing that it's going to get better for so many small businesses has to do with worrying about money and where that money is going to come from. And you guys offer a solution for that. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's a lot, um, there are a lot of things out there. Um, So CDFIs, Community Development Finance Institutions, are really, really great alternative to banks. That that's not what we are. I want to make it very clear. But they are really, really and they they want to help their their um mission is to help small businesses. Uh there are a lot of places that give grants. Um I highly recommend small businesses to get in touch with the sort of small business, you know, sort of association in their city. Um, So like New York City has a really, really active one. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of municipalities uh, and chambers of commerce do that. You know, there are a lot of people that want to see small businesses thrive. And so part of it is seeing and getting access to all of these um, institutions that really want to see you survive and, and thrive. Uh, and again, sometimes you don't know. Like I didn't know about a lot of these places. And so um, it just takes a little bit of elbow grease to say, OK, what, what's out there that can help support me? The other thing I would do, so my last piece of advice is to find a community, which is why I really love what you guys do. Find a community that's either virtual or for real and um, and, and support each other, right? Like there are things you're going through that other small business owners are going through. And there are networks that op- that offer that. There's, you know, everything. There's an organization called EO, which is Entrepreneurs Organization. There's YPO. There's all, there's a Women's Business Owners Association. There's so many things and it offers you community and support, which I think is really, really important as well. Yeah, that's the one thing we always find with Bossy is it doesn't matter what industry you're in. We all have the same struggles on some level. Oh, yeah. And you just and you want to know you're not alone, right? And part of it is saying, you know, sometimes you're not even looking for a solution. Sometimes you're just looking to say, hey, I need community, right? Like, I just want to you know, be with people who are going through the things that I'm right. going through. It's so difficult to kind of complain to to non-business owners. They're like, well, they just don't get it. And I'm like, I feel bad about what I'm about to complain. Like, we're almost too busy and that's a stress. Like those people just, oh. It's it a is. huge stress, uh-huh. right? It's a huge stress. And so, because you have employees, you have employees that get sick, you have employees who won't, like, you, there, there's sort of all parts of the cycle is on you. And so that that is the source of stress. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you so much. Tell us how people can, well, A, I recommend everybody going out and Googling Sagel because her story is amazing. <laughs> but how can they get set up with now? You know, how can they reach out to you? So now um, just go to our website, uh, nowaccount.com, and um, and you can say start here and it, you can start the application process. 
Um, and so we would love for you guys, if you're a B2B business, please apply. We would love, we love serving as many businesses as we can. For me, you can find me on, um, on X at Sejal Shah Gulati. You can find me on LinkedIn at Sejal Shah Gulati. Those are the two things that, um, the two places that I, I don't really, I don't think anyone does Facebook anymore. <laughs> so you can find me there. And Instagram, I, it will be pictures of my dog. So you can find me on Instagram, but they're all pictures of my dog. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Oh, thank you. You guys are great. And good luck to both of you. Thank you so much. Okay. She says, sometimes you're not looking for a solution. You're looking to say, hey, I need community. I just need to be with people who are going through things I'm going through. Hell no. Don't make me cry. I know. I won't. Sorry. What a great lady. I mean, she she's done everything. Time Inc., Time... India, American Express, she, to now what she's doing with now, which is just, she's she's done it all. And I think our second New York City Marathon runner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think we're starting to get a, a type. Are we getting a type cast? <laughs> we are. We might. We might. We might, have, <laughs> we might have a type. I am never running the marathon, by the way. No. In case she wanted to know. No. <laughs> I love that what she does. I love that this exists. I think we have to really start being creative about how we're solving some of these financial solutions that we're going to find ourselves in. We're going to continue to find ourselves in who knows how long this recession is going to go on for and what certainly for our industry has changed so much. And I don't know that it'll go back to what it is that we've kind of built our businesses to really only be able to do. I know other industries are having to pivot in similar ways too. So this is definitely a an episode for you to be listening to if you need to know other ways to get money. Yes. And to be a part of a group, right? So important. I love that she remembered so much about being a business owner and like that seclusion. Mm-hmm. I love when she talks about, you know, I don't, sometimes I don't need a solution. I just need to be around people who get it. And which I think is, I mean, this so aligns with who you and I are and what bossy is. But I love that somebody who kind of really doesn't going to ever run in our circles is saying the exact same thing we've said for years. Yeah. Love that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for us as a team to remember that that is the point and bossy. Yeah, absolutely. It's finding the people who get it and being able to feel comfortable to say, I'm, I'm struggling and I might, I just need some help. I don't need a solution. I don't, I just need to, sometimes I just need to complain and feel like I can complain to people who understand. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today with another amazing episode of Getting Real with Bossy and another amazing business owner's story to even though she's not currently a business owner, uh, where she is now and how she's continuing to help small businesses, which is, you know, if we ever left our positions, I think that that's something that would be really important to us moving out in the future. So it was it was nice to hear. Well, make sure to follow us on all your social medias, Bossy Rock, B-O-S-S-Y-R-O-C, BossyRock.com. If you need to get in touch with us, BossyRock at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you and hear how things are going in your businesses. Yes. Be bold. Be brave. Be the boss. Be the boss.